In recent videos, we've been doing some pretty abstract problems, but they are important. That continues in this video. In fact, it's a starred problem, 2.1.24, which means it involves a little extra than is typically required, and this one definitely is quite involved. It's about relating present and future values of annuities with different interest rates that are valid over different periods. It's kind of a long problem statement. Suppose you've got an annuity of n plus k equally spaced payments, and in k of course are integers, of an amount 1, as usual in the theory here, each subject to interest at rate i per period payment, payment period until the nth payment, and at rate j per payment period starting just after the nth payment and then continuing until the kth payment. If y is the accumulated value, or future value of this series of payments at the time right after the final payment, and x is the present value of the series one period before the first payment, so it's really like an annuity immediate, so the present value is evaluated one period before, show that y equals 1 plus i to the n times 1 plus j to the k times x. Okay, um, If you briefly think about this, it makes good sense. Essentially we take the present value x and we need to push it forward in time multiplying by the growth factor 1 plus i for each of the first n years and then multiplying the by the new growth factor 1 plus j for the next k years. So this makes good logical sense. But we want to confer, confirm this algebraically. Note this is not required in the books problem where they don't say this note. We will first confirm this equation uh, that the future value uh, of a series of payments of 1 for an annuity immediate immediately after the last payment is the present value at time 0 pushed forward in time by n years. And by the way, this would be true even if I replaced the i with a j, of course. i is an arbitrary interest rate. Let's confirm that first. Uh, that's pretty easy to do. We can just use the formula for a n i here. It's 1 minus v to the n over i, and I'm multiplying by 1 plus i to the n. Distribute this through on the top, and I'm going to get 1 plus i to the n minus v to the n times 1 plus i to the n over i. And I hope you realize very quickly that this thing is nothing but 1 here, because v is 1 over 1 plus i. Therefore, we get the formula for Sn. This equals S sub n with interest rate i. Okay, so that's there's our first thing to confirm that's going to be helpful in algebraically confirming this thing. Now I'm about to write down a bunch of symbols based on, well, I guess I will go ahead and draw a number line here. Symbols and equations. It's going to get kind of complicated and to confirm this, and it's going to be kind of confusing and it's going to be very easy to make a mistake. I will do my best to explain it and not make a mistake hopefully as I go. So we've got our timeline here. We've got the first n periods with n payments of 1 for which the interest rate i is valid. And then we've got the next series of k years with payments at the end of each year on which the interest rate j is valid. So i, i is valid, that's the going interest rate, if you will, and j is valid. Let's write, first of all, expressions for x and y in terms of a's and s's and i's and j's and maybe even some v's here, let's see. So y is the accumulated value of this entire series just after the last payment at this time right there. That's where we evaluate y. So I need to push these things forward in time. I can uh, initially think of pushing these things forward to time n plus k on which j is valid here. The future value of that series of k payments at right after the last payment, immediately after the last payment, is sk 
with interest rate J. Then I've got the first N payments that I'm first going to push forward to time N. And I can write S N I. And then I push that amount, S N I, which is at this moment in time, and I multiply it by 1 plus J to the K. So here is an expression for Y. Okay, What about an expression now for X? X is the present value at time 0 of the entire income stream here. Think about the first N payments. For an annuity immediate, the present value time zero there for those end payments is going to be symbolically A N with interest rate I. Now think about the last K payments. First, we find the present value of that, the last K payments, one period before the first of those at time N. That will be um, A K J k of those payments and j is the valid interest rate, but then I have to discount that back in time to time zero. I need to multiply by v to the n where this v corresponds is the v corresponding to the interest rate i. All right, so there are abstract expressions for x and y. I now want to verify that if I multiply x by 1 plus i to the n and 1 plus j to the k that I can simplify it to y and I'm going to use this fact that we confirmed earlier. All right, so let's go ahead and do that here. 1 plus i to the n times 1 plus j to the k times x. I need to multiply 1 plus i to the n and 1 plus j to the k times each thing here and add them. And through some appropriate grouping, it will help us get to the answer more quickly. Let me, when I multiply times the first thing, group them like this, and maybe for, for extra emphasis, I'll include parentheses here and here, for example. You might want to think about why I'm doing that. And then I multiply times this thing and do some appropriate grouping. I think the most appropriate way to do things here would be to maybe write it like this. The extra parentheses that I'm adding in here are, of course, not necessary, but they help conceptually. All right, so what do we have here? In parentheses here, 1 plus i to the n times a n i, based on this thing we confirmed first, that is going to be s n i. This thing is the same kind of principle except with a K instead of an N, this is going to be S, K, well, and a J instead of an I, S, K, J. What about this thing? I hope you realize real quickly that that is nothing other than one. V, I here is one over one plus I. I'm using a subscript of I because this discount factor goes with I. V, J would be one over one plus J, but I don't need that here. And as you look over this thing and compare it, with this, you realize uh, we're done. That does it, except maybe, maybe you want to rearrange for extra emphasis. This is the same as S, K, J plus S, N, I times 1 plus J to the K. I just rearranged the order of those things. All right, so kind of an abstract problem. Lots of symbols. Very easy to make a mistake, but it is confirming something that's very intuitive. You want to you wanna intuitively know these kinds of equations be able to or reason them out very quickly. But we are confirming that they do indeed work algebraically, which is important.